Yeah, hi team. So welcome back to High Tech Institution uh, YouTube channel. You all know uh, recent days, right? Uh, we people are taking some important topic and we are discussing among each other. So we'll be collecting, you know, two or three techies uh, from the respective uh, field expertise. We'll be discussing about that particular product, right? Same way today we are going to discuss more about, uh, you know, uh, more or less into uh, NoSQL DB, I would say. Uh, there are database from Cosmos DB from Azure and uh, Dynamo DB from AWS. We're going to compare each and everything uh, uh, between Dynamo DB and Cosmos DB. Hope you will going to get the important and the very interesting information from our discussion. Okay, let's get started. I'm handing over to Satish. He's going to one uh, ask so many questions. Recently, he attended lots of you know interviews and uh, he's uh, you know uh, captured some important uh, general questions from uh, database sites. Yes, Satish, over to you. Take it forward. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Hari. Yeah, hi team. Uh, this discussion already said Hari side all about uh, Cosmo DB and uh, Dynamo DB. Yeah, first question. Uh, this is more one for you. Uh, could you please tell us um, what is Cosmo DB and Dynamo DB? Okay, so Dynamo DB it's a fully noted no SQL model. Okay, so there we can work with the uh, custom records, okay, and then which is provided by AWS, okay, as Sari said, and here we can perform, you know, if the advantages is we don't want to keep uh, more tables, okay, so generally if you are working in a, uh, if you are a developer in the sense, uh, if you handling a database, a relational database in the sense, we should handle more tables and then we should expose the relationship between those tables. But the advantage is using the Dynamo DB. We don't want to go with that much complications. Here, simply we can sort out that issue. Okay, so and then to avoid the latency, we are using the Dynamo DB. And then coming to Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB, which is provided by Azure, uh, that having multiple models of database. Like you know, there we can work with the document basis, graph basis, uh, key value, custom column value like that. We can work with the some DB models, okay, and then that also provide that also you no know, uh, providing the sorry that also avoiding the latency issues, and uh, then we can get the high availability and then scalability also in future if we wants to scale up our uh, record size uh, table size something like that if we wants to scale up sense, we can scale up to Cosmos DB and then depends on the record insertion and then depends on the usage we have to pay according yeah yes sir this yeah these things okay yeah. i'll move to the next question yeah uh, hari this is for you what are the key features for cosmo db and dynamo db key key features. Features. okay so when come to no sequel we have lots of uh, no features by the way uh yes compared to uh, dynamo db and cosmos db right i'll go with one by one first dynamo db from aws so it's it's provides right a single digit uh, millisecond latency i mean even you have a huge uh, data are stored in the uh, database right it won't take much time when you retrieve from your application or whatever okay that is the biggest advantage and feature i would say and yes the dynamo db itself if you go there will be various tabs will be there in the console so it automatically uh, giving you backup and restoring functionality uh, that uh, nobody provides you need to go ahead and manually configure it but here you have an inbuilt feature, okay? And of course, yes, uh, you can scale it like anything. You don't want to worry about uh, limitation or storage. Scalability is outstanding when come to AWS DynamoDB. Easy to use, user-friendly, like all those uh, uh, many advantages are there. Coming to Cosmos DB, right? Which is, uh, as usual, uh, backend it uses the automatic scaling, as we said, in the DynamoDB, okay? So it, 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 you know, uh, various data models it supports, by the way. Okay, example, I would say document or graph or any key value or different, you know, column family, like all these uh, various data models, right, which is supportable, okay. And uh, it's, it's offer global distribution as well. Uh, globally, right, it across available. So these were the advantages, I would say, when come to Cosmos DB. These are the key feature I personally prefer. Okay, uh, next question. How does replication on data consistency work in Cosmo DB and DynamoDB? 
or data consistency on their application, right? So yeah, basically Cosmo DB provides, right? Uh, you know, consistency level, like uh, uh, various things, uh, like the uh, strong, bounded, uh, stateless, and session, eventual, like various things are there when come to, you know, uh, consistency level. So, and uh, automatically, right, uh, multi-region replication available by default. So, even you have a database in one region, right, uh, it's automatically, right, uh, multi-region, the data replication happening. So, that is a one big uh, advantage of uh, Cosmos DB. Similarly, right, uh, DynamoDB, uh, it's very much consistently, uh, consistent as similar like your Cosmos DB. Uh, for uh, for uh, the application where it required more read operations, right? This is very much recommended, I would say. Okay. Uh, again, a data replication. Uh, not this is uh, this is not like a Cosmos DB across multiple region. When come to DynamoDB, right? Within a region, but multiple availability zones, right? The replication uh, are getting happy. Okay, that is the one limitation I would say. But yeah, we do have options. You can expand it to multiple regions. But fine. Uh, I believe as far as my uh, experience and understanding, right? Having a data available across uh, within a region with multiple availability zone is a biggest, uh, you know, achievement, I would say. Okay, this is how the replication and consistency works in Cosmos DB and DynamoDB. Okay. Okay. I'm to the next question. Morgan, this is for you. How does the pricing model for difference between CosmoDB and DynamoDB? Okay, so coming to the, coming to DynamoDB, okay, so it depends on the storage and data transfer, okay, so how we are inserting a data, how we are fetching an information, okay, so these things is a considerable thing, and then uh, provision to throughput capacity, okay, so if you are using a DynamoDB, you need to focus, you know, you need to check these things, okay, so how they are going to put the building like that, in the sense, we need to check these things. And then coming to Cosmos DB, okay, so same set, same kind of scenarios there in Cosmos DB, okay, so there also provision the throughput, and then how you consumed, okay, so storage how you used, and then depends on that, and then data transfer, data transfer means insertion, updation, deletion, like that we are performing some activity instead of a Cosmos DB, right? So these things, okay, so these things we need to consider for pricing, okay, so depends on these things they will put your charge accordingly. Okay, so similarly, like if we take a DynamoDB and then throughput capacity, um, index data storage, and then uh, data transfer. Okay, so these things they will take and then they will put the charge account. Yeah, so these things then. Okay, Morgan. Yeah. yeah, next question. Hari, this is for you. What are some use cases where CosmoDB and DynamoDB exist? You understand Those cases, yeah. Uh, you mean to uh, from real project and which scenario it suits, right? Cosmos DB Dynamo. Yes, yes. uh, I don't yes. want to answer this question by you know differentiating both because uh, both of them almost providing same use case. Uh, I personally feel, which means uh, the application where you required a global uh, distribution of your data, right? You can prefer to go with uh, any one of this DB. Of course, low latency, as I said. Even though you have a huge data, the latency is very much, you know, good in this, low latency. Again, uh, the cloud providers take your responsibility of high availability. So your application demands high availability, definitely you can consider. So mostly, right, uh, the, the gaming application or any, any such web applications, okay, and the mobile application even. So you can consider to go with any one of this DB, Cosmos DB or DynamoDB, okay. So no SQL, like uh, not only SQL, so it can, it's, it's beyond, okay. So no, no, not, not structured data. So like uh, you can have your data, you can play with your data inside this DB. Okay. So these are the real uh, example, I would say, when to use, uh, where to use. Okay. Okay. Yeah, move to the next question. Morgan, this is for you. What are the supported data models in? Cosmos DB and DynamoDB. Um, Cosmos DB supports you know various data models like you know including document like um JSON and then it supports BSONs also. Okay, so then and then coming to graph, coming to graph like you know it supports uh what is that um Germany. Okay, so key values. 
Okay, so if we take a column from the uh, Cassandra, it's supporting. Okay, so like that, supporting various models. And then depends on your real-time use case, you can include these things into your scenario. And then coming to DynamoDB, which supports support key values and then document data models. Okay, these two supporting here. But in Cosmos DB, you know, various models is there. And you know, coming to DynamoDB, these two things that we need to consider these things. Okay. Yeah. Yes, for the So these are the things. It's that in these two. Okay, Morgan. Uh, next question, Hari. Uh, could you tell us how does backup and restore functionality difference between Cosmo DB and Dynamo DB? Yes, uh, both of them cloud offering service uh, where if you take uh, Cosmos DB, right? Uh, it inbuilt has a continuous backup. Okay. So where you have a feature called a point in time restore. Uh, so that will allow you to restore your data if something happened to your data, right? <coughs> Within 30 days, you would be able to recover your data. Okay. Using that point in time restore capacity. I would capability. Okay. Where DynamoDB provides also same on demand backup and restore. So either you can have a full backup of your entire DynamoDB table. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, you can, whenever uh, you have anything missing from the uh, on-demand backup, you can restore it. Very much, you know, easy. Uh, as I said initially, before start this uh, discussion, DynamoDB, we have various tab. If you go, there is a one dedicated tab they have given for the backup and uh, restore. Okay, all those things is possible. Even if you accidentally delete, you would be able to, you know, get back, roll back your uh, uh, operation, what you have done. Okay, coming to backup and restore, very much user friendly, guys. Okay, that is what I would say. Okay. Uh, next question, Morgan. This is for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, could you tell us can Cosmo DB be used with the different programming languages? Hmm. Yeah. Actually, you know, uh, Cosmos DB providing SDKs. Okay, SDK is coming uh, standard development kit that supports various languages like Python, .NET, Java. Okay, so see, let's take an example. Uh, initially, I'm a full stack developer. Okay, so initially, you know, uh, if I wants to expose a connectivity between a relational database in the sense, I need to define the endpoint, something like that I need to follow. Okay, so then coming to Cosmos DB, right? I don't want to work with the multiple tables. Okay, I can simply map it into one table that can manage our entire user's information. Okay. And then, you know, initially I exposed the connectivity using Python language and uh, even uh, we can work with the Java frameworks also, Java frameworks like JSP. And then if you go and set up a .NET, we can integrate into the Cosmos DB. Okay, so like that, we can simply map it into the backend. If any user, if any user data arrives in the front end, you know, that will be, that, sorry, that will be stored under the Cosmos DB. Okay, so same scenario we can achieve in DynamoDB also. Okay, yeah. Okay, Morgan. Uh, could you tell us, uh, is there offer here free tier for Cosmo DB? Free uh, yes, actually, uh, if you are using a uh, free trial subscription, in the sense, it providing limited throughput and then storage for testing and development purpose. Okay, so when you come, uh, sorry, if you are going with the pay, CEO, or other subscription model, in the sense, these things will not be there in that case. Okay. So there's the setting on limitation, you have to, you know, use that. Okay. So otherwise, if you are, if you want to handle huge uh, records, huge infos, you have to manage inside of a table. This is, that's not possible. Okay. Yeah. It is providing the free trial, but some limitations is there. Okay. So throughput and then storage. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks yeah. for your input. Yes, fine. We are done very well. Yeah, Hari, please share your input for conclusion. Yes, guys. Like, uh, yeah, that was a great question, Satish. You captured almost uh, you uh, covered uh, the NoSQL DBs on various aspects. Uh, that's good. Uh, yeah, obviously we got a good response from previous topics from you know uh, our YouTube uh, subscribers. This also helped them well, I believe. Yeah, we'll quickly you know get back to them with the other one good discussion okay fine thank you thanks for uh, watching this video uh, please do subscribe this channel and also share with your friends whoever uh, feel like who works in cosmos db or dynamo db take care all bye bye